Cowabunga, babes. I'm EJ, you're you, and welcome to my channel. So, we have a long build ahead of us, so I'm really not gonna talk too much in this intro, because we just need to get into it, because lord, this build took a long time and I did not anticipate that. So, why don't you just go ahead and quickly hit that subscribe button, quickly, you know, like the video, leave a comment, all that good engagement stuff for the ye olde algorithm, you know? And uh, let's get into it, y'all. Hey Lopez, hey Lopez, you ready for your, you excited for your redesign? <laughs> yeah, you are, yeah. Oh my God, Coco, we're also doing your house too. Coco, come back here, come back. Are you excited, Coco? No, not you, Audi. I, no, Coco. <sighs> God. So as mentioned, we are going to be doing the first part of the villager house areas. Um, we're starting off with Lopez and Coco because they are, I have, three villagers so far on my island that I know I want to keep. I have Coco, I have Lopez, and I have Audi. Um, I want Audi to have more of a beach house, so we're starting off with Coco and Lopez. Um, there also is Sheldon's house back here. He's like a jock squirrel. Um, I don't want him on my final island just because he was one of my starter villagers, so his house is really basic. Um, but also he's not very jungly. You know, squirrels, not exactly something you'd find in a jungle, right? Um, so. I'm gonna have Boone instead, who I'm very excited for, but don't have him yet, so we're using Sheldon as a placeholder. Now, the idea behind this is that I wanted it to be a secluded kind of mountain beach moment, like waterfalls, like V jungly, V cute, like that, right? And it's off to the side. Um, ignore the river and bridge moment happening in like the background that you can see. That is gonna be for a separate uh, resident services speed build, but I did the first part of it as this build um, just cause I needed to get it out of the way. Um, um, so that I could figure out the flow of this area. So you just pretend you don't see it. I don't know. Now, one major theme of this build, and one thing that I definitely am like, okay, I need to do this in the future, is getting rid of all of these flowers and trees. And there was like random furniture that I left around here. I just need to clean out these areas first because good Lord, I spent so much time. I wasted so much time, frankly, um, having to clear out all of this stuff and talking to freaking Chatter, who I also went off my island. I hate Chatter. Ugh, we're the anti-Chatter fan club. I'm sorry, guys. Anyways. Yeah, I just like needed to move this stuff beforehand because as you can see, I'm moving flowers, I'm moving trees, and it's just getting in the way of me actually doing the build. So in the future, let's, you know, EJ, don't get ahead of yourself. Finish cleaning first and then you can build, okay? Okay. That's my pact with myself, my future EJ. So yeah, I'm just building out the cliffs now, um, making them more of like kind of a, I don't know, what would you call this? Like a boomerang shape kind of. Um, and then we're gonna have waterfalls in the middle that come down into a lovely little lagoon. Ah, that's what this is. This is like a lagoon area. Uh, I definitely intended for that the entire time and I didn't just think of that word um, now to describe it. So I don't know what you guys are talking about. This is that squirrel, by the way, this is Sheldon. Honestly, I probably don't like him just because he reminds me of that Big Bang character. Anyways, so this is just like a little valley entrance. I'm kind of obsessed with how this turned out. I didn't intend for there to be like this cute valley moment, but like I really like how it turned out. I like having cliffs on either side of it. Like, ooh, very fun, very cute. So we're starting with pads. I always, if you have watched these speed builds, you know by now that like I almost always start with pads. I just think it really helps me figure out the flow of an area. Um, and that way it's kind of designed with like the movement first and then the furniture goes in around it. Um, and continuing with that, I'm planning out where I want Lopez's house, thinking about it real hard and deciding against putting it the original spot that I intended it for, putting it instead right here at the base of like Coco's staircase going up, which was the right decision. So now we're gonna move Lopez's house here because it is you know first in the flow of traffic. So it's gonna help me determine everything else. I decided I wanted to make these waterfalls double tiered. So I have to build out some of the cliffs because I still want to make sure that I have room behind the waterfalls to put trees and, uh, you know, other flora. 
And now up here, building up these cliffs. I love waterfalls that are like staggered and have breaks in the middle of them because I feel like every waterfall I've seen always is like, it's not like a solid wall of water. It's not like every waterfall is in Niagara Falls, you know? There's always like a rock or something protruding in the middle of it. So whenever I do my waterfalls, I always try to like make them a little asymmetrical, um, have, you know, like a random spot of land in the middle of it. Um, so yeah, you, you can definitely see that with this section. Um, and then I decided to do a tree on a cliff moment at the very top. And to do that, I had to build out the cliffs twice down here because I messed up um, in terms of just like planning it out and to then create that like the special circumstances for the cliffs, for the trees on the cliff. It was a lot of work. Um, you can't really see it <laughs> from the bottom. So like, was it worth it? Eh, the jury's out. When will they be back in? That's my question. The jury's always out. Why is the jury always out? Bring the jury back in. We need to do some decisions, y'all. And now up here, we're going to have Coco's house. I really want it to be tucked back into the cliffs, make it feel really, uh, again, secluded and stuff like that. So I'm going to play around with a few options, but I ultimately decided to put it like flush against the back of the cliff. Um, just because that also helps control traffic. And here we are, here's here's Coco's house. Now we're deciding to put some trees down. You can see some in the valley below and now we're gonna put some more. And now putting down paths. As you can see, I'm happy that I have my 16 piece path pattern now because I could do that little like one square of path right in front of the bridge, perfect. Or bridge. Incline, you know what I meant. Come on, don't look at me like that. You know what I was talking about. Uh, the Brooklyn Gangster is back in this video. I don't know why. I love these plank patterns. This is actually a plank pattern that I found in my most recent path video. Go watch that video. I'm gonna pop it up into the top corner card thing. But I found these path, these planks online. I love them. I think they are perfect for like an island beach moment. Um, I just really like that. It's like, a, you know, it's a different path than just the, the dark jungle path, which I love, but you know, variety. Variety is the spice of life, am I right? more trees putting down and then still trying to figure out this pathing on the actual beach itself. I decided in front of the lagoon, um, I wanted to have kind of a stall, not like necessarily like a, a commerce moment, more of like the stall as a table, <laughs> if that makes sense. I didn't want, whereas, you know, the marketplace was very commercial. That's clearly where, you know, business is done. I wanted this to be much more residential. This is for the people who live on the island. This is their secret cove by the lagoon where they come to hang out. So I didn't want it to feel commercial, but you know, the stall was still there because one, verticality, it adds nice height. And two, um, you know, it's cute. contemplating my existence and placing trees, <laughs> my two special talents. So we will get to these upper sections soon, but for now, more pathing, more pathing, more pathing. We love pathing. So I use lots and lots of coconut trees. Um, and one thing that you're not seeing me do is every time I pick up a coconut tree, I always shake all of the, the coconuts off of it um, and bury them somewhere else on the beach because I'm using so many trees and coconut trees specifically on this island that I'm just like, okay, I gotta keep, make sure I'm you know doing a renewable resource kind of thing. And then this is the, um, little like dump zone. That was a little dump zone by my house of all this different furniture that I had. Um, a lot of festival stuff that I got from <laughs> Treasure Islands. Um, and you know, I'm just like, I kept it out there just so I could like quickly look at it. And also cause my storage in my house was full. So, you know. So also you might've caught on and I completely forgot to talk about this, that like there's a 
bunch more um, furniture and stuff up by Coco's house. And that's because I accidentally um, forgot to record the part where I decorated the beginning of her house and also the like top of the waterfall. So sorry, um, but you will see some cliffside designing later when I do the section to the left of that upper part. Um, but yeah, my cat got into my lap. He like curled onto my lap. He's so cute. And I just got really distracted and I wasn't thinking about recording. So sorry, but you know, Thomas, my cat, he, he takes precedence. I decided to sh uh, switch out this festival um, stall just cause I thought it was a little too bright for me. Maybe this, I don't know if I'm going to use any of the festival items, honestly, just because like, I, I really like subdued colors. Um, and they're so bright that I'm like, oh, I used a few of them up in like the upper section, specifically the garland. Um, and I used a parasol like one or tw one or two times. But other than that, I'm not totally sure if I'm going to be able to use a lot of the festival stuff as cute as it, as cute as it is. So we're also doing that thing. I'm back on my BS with, you know, the patterns underneath every single piece of furniture. So just get used to that. Every time I place on a piece of furniture, I want to put a pattern underneath it just because I think it adds another layer of depth. It makes it look full without having to, you know, put a bunch of items there. Check, taking a quick look at Coco's house. It looks good. We took a picture. Another day I time traveled to get some deliveries because I didn't have, um, you know, my storage is not that full because this is a new island. So just got some more beach chairs, a barbecue. Um, you know, I put down this ukulele, played around with putting the parasol there, decided against it. Although actually after seeing the edit of it, I, I might put the parasol back in. I kind of like how it looks, but I also feel like it was blocking the stall. So I don't know, but yeah, I actually think I had the right idea back then. I should trust my past self. So now I put a hammock over here by Boone, well, Sheldon's house right now, but it will be Boone's house. Um, and then I also wanted to put, I put the campfire here. I, I changed it because I thought Jock, you know, okay, why is there a campfire there? That doesn't necessarily have something specifically to do with him. I put kettlebells instead. Love these Maui statues. This area isn't really accessible. Um, like you can walk there and I, you know, I was able to walk back and forth when I was designing this, but it's not necessarily an area you're gonna go and hang out in. Um, so I decided just to fill it up with different things, uh, some trees, some bushes, shrubs, and of course the Maui statue, my favorite. So I decided to put a tiny library up by Coco's house because, you know, normal villagers love to read. She loves to read. She's talked to me about reading a bunch. So, you know. And then I got this marimba randomly from one of my villagers while I was doing this build. And I was like, hey, this works. So I put it down by um, Lopez's house because, like, you know, the smug villager, he's like, draw, uh, you know, acting school, music, all that stuff. I don't know. So. He has a marimba outside. It makes sense, right? Art. As you can see, I'm really just trying to go back and forth and I'm seeing areas that feel empty and trying to figure out things that I can put into those areas to make it feel uh, a little more full. So this one area of my beach right here is kind of empty. So I decided to fill it in with that parasol. And now we're filling up the upper part um, behind Sheldon slash Boone's house. Now, important back here is verticality. Because it's behind a house, it's not necessarily, it's like kind of far in the background. Stuff that you put down here that's kind of low isn't really gonna be seen. Um, so this cannon is cute, but actually you can't see it from down below. So, um, you know, maybe I should have been telling this to my past self as well, but, I think it's like a cute moment still. Um, and I think like, you know, if you walk back there, you'll find a cute little moment. And I think it looks full and, you know, maybe it'll help with the flyover. Who knows? I'm trying to tell myself that it was worth it. Basically, so <laughs> that's what you're hearing right now is me uh, bargaining with myself. 
But I think like independent of that, this area does look kind of cute. And that parasol, I love this red parasol. I think the red parasol is my favorite color because it really stands out. It provides a nice contrast against all the bright greens that I have on this jungle island, you know? And so now you can see me looking down saying, oh, great, I can't really see anything. But looking up and just like trying to see what's empty, what is missing. Um, and the next area I focus in on was right over here by Lopez's house. And I had put down like a DIY table just so I didn't have to go keep going back and forth to my house, even though I did still do a fair amount of that. Um, and I had decided, and, and it was like taking up space and I was like, I like there being something here, but I don't want to keep the DIY table here because this is in excess. It's, it's out of the way, off the beaten path as it were. So instead I decided I took the inspiration of that moment. Oh no, I'm gonna put this thing here. So I put a go table. So this is like kind of like a recreational area. You have the game table. We're gonna put a little radio here. Another item that I just got randomly during the build. And I was like, ah, oh, this works. My, my villagers were very helpful with this build. They gave me a few items that I actually ended up using in the final version. Gotta take some pictures of Coco always. And so because I like the DIY bench there, now I decided to put this spiky fencing. I finally found fencing that I like for this build island. So I am gonna, you'll see the spiky fencing pop up in some previous areas that were already built. Um, but you know, I like it. And now I just, th I felt like it needed one more like vertical thing here. So I put another palm tree and uh, I was right. So <laughs> I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. And now I'm just filling in this valley moment. Lots of stone things. Again, verticality, very important. And really just like, you know, lining the pathways with different flowers and fun little furniture moments. Here she is, y'all. Here is the finished beach cliff lagoon moment. I love it. Can we say lush for one thing? Green as another thing. Uh, homey, lived in. Uh, uh, the adjectives. These are all adjectives that I'm saying. But really, I do love just, I feel like the color palette came out really well. I wasn't necessarily planning on that, so I'm really happy that that happened. Um, I feel like it seems so bright and colorful, but it seems very cohesive. I love that each villager kind of has their own little area. Of course, I gave Coco a special area, but you know, it's Coco. So, Thank you guys so much for sticking here. If you stuck around to the end, please comment in the comment section what your, mm, let's say Zodiac sign is, because I just wanna see if people actually watched the whole thing, because I know that this was a long build. So I really appreciate it if you're still watching. Um, hit that subscribe button. If you if you made it to this point, hit that subscribe button. Like reward yourself by subscribing to me. Um, yeah, and I will see you guys in the next build. Bye.